Hello everyone, welcome to my video channel. Today I am going to talk regarding amputation stump. Generally, what do you mean by one and ideal stump? Two, bone and well covered with muscles. Three, non adherent incision scar. Four, muscular with good muscle power. Five, absence of neuroma. Six, free from infection. Seven, full and free movement at the joint above with no fixed flexion deformity present of the limb. P.S. The disclaimer is the same in all my videos. Thank you. Now let's begin. As an introduction, the stump should be covered with a durable vascular subcutaneous tissue and skin that can withstand the pressure in weight-bearing areas and friction, friction in areas of prosthesis. Among the methods that can be used for predicting the level to which adequate vascularity for primary wound healing include A. Transcutaneous measurement of oxygen tension B. Anchor breaker index or anchor breaker systolic index ABSI C. Measurement of the toe breaker index D. Analysis of the Doppler waveform E. Skin Perfusion Pressure, SPP This technique involves placing the cuff on the target area of the limb in line with a Doppler laser sensor and allowing an automated program of inflation and deflation to run, producing a graph of cuff pressure and percent skin perfusion. The SPP, Skin Perfusion Pressure, Value is calculated as the pressure at which skin perfusion returns after occlusion of the blood flow. F. Fluorescence Angiography FA, is a technique used in wound care to visualize tissue perfusion in real time by using a fluorescent dye called idocyanin green ICG. In lower limb amputation, if amputation is the patient's chief concern, it should be done at the maximum distal level. If the patient has no ambulatory potential, wound healing with decreased preoperative mobility should be the chief concern. In any case, the ideal stump should have minimal length to allow a prosthetic fitting. For number one, what do you mean by an ideal stump? For an optimum result, the stump should be A. The shape is conical in nature B. The size must be a proper length to fit with a prosthesis In BKA, below the amputation, the ideal length is around 12.5 cm to 17.5 cm distal to the middle tibial articular surface. Minimum working length is around 9 cm. Usually less than 12 cm is less efficient. But if less than 6 cm, the stump is functionless. Number C. An ideal stump should be covered by healthy skin whereby stump heal adequately. Gently contour the stump with adequate muscle padding. Thin scar is preferable in which it does not interfere with prosthetic function. D. An ideal stump must have a proper skin and joint sensors with adequate adjacent joint movement. Number two, regarding the bone end, well covered with muscle. The stump should have an end bearing. Stump should have a side pad or bony surfaces of sufficient size that can bear the weight for varying period, especially in a partial, partial foot amputation. In the case of ankle or knees, knee disarticulation, and bearing can be created by a tibia fibula synostosis. Either in 
and bearing stamp or to in this articulation. For example, knee disarticulation. I will be showing you a picture after this. This articulation is desirable in growing children and elderly. In children, overgrowth is seen in difficile amputation. In this articulation, this problem is avoided by retaining the epiphysis through this articulation. For this articulation in elderly, the end bearing improves the prosthetic fitting and the chances of rehabilitation. For number three, for an non-adherent incision scar, for the scar itself, the position of scar is not important with advent of modern total contact prosthetic socket. The scar should not be adherent to the bone. A large dog ear is not desirable. A redundant soft tissue creates problems in the prosthetic fittings. Another thing, the skin and the muscle flap over the stump should be thick. Number four, muscular with good muscle power. The muscle is divided at least 5 cm distal to the intended bone resection. The stump can be stabilized by myodesis whereby the muscle or tendon sutured to the bone or by myoplasty whereby the muscle is sutured to the periosteum or fascia of the opposite musculature. Myodesis is actually a better option whereby it gives stronger insertion, it maximizes the strength and minimizes the atrophy. Another advantage of myodesis is it can counterbalance their muscle antagonists. It helps in preventing contracture and it maximizes the residual limb function. Myodesis is contraindicated in severe ischemia. There would be a higher risk of wound breakdown. Number five, absence of neuroma. The nerve transected to reduce the risk of neuroma. Various methods that can be used to reduce neuroma formation including and loop anastomosis, perineural closure, celastic capping, ligation, cauterization. Now the why is bury the nerve end in the bone or muscle. The nerve should be isolated, pulled distally to the wound, divided with a sharp knife. The nerve will retract well proximal to the level of bone dissection. What is neuroma? It is a thicker nerve tissue that can cause pain and discomfort to a patient. More regarding post-amputation neuroma, it can occur around 20-30% to of amputees a neuroma is a tumor-like thickening of a nerve stump in the region of the scar after amputation of a limb. The treatment for post-amputation neuroma include targeted muscle re-innovation. If failed local measures, consider surgical removal of painful neuroma. Number six, the stump is free from infection. Skin on the surface of the stump must be cleaned to reduce the risk of it becoming irritated or infected. Patients need to be aware and always monitor for any signs of infection, example warm, red and tender skin, any discharge of fluid or pus or any increasing in swelling of the stump. Regarding number 7, full and free movement at the joint above. The muscle near the amputated limb or at the hip or knee joint tend to be shortened. This shortening will develop contracture as a result from sitting in a chair or wheelchair for a long period of time or from lying in the bed for a long time. The problem is contracture will limit the range of movement ROM. If a contracture is severe, a prosthesis may not fit correctly or the person may become unable to use the prosthesis. Again, no fixed deformity is good for an amputated stump. During operation, an excessive periosteal stripping is not advised as this will result in a ring sequestra and bone overgrowth. The bone prominence not covered by adequate soft tissue must be resected. The remaining surface wraps to smooth the contour of the bone. 
before definitive prosthesis fitted, strong and functional thumb must be present for a maximum prosthetic use. Additional notes regarding this articulation. This articulation is distinguished by the bones that does not need to be transected. Instead, a dis this articulation divides the extremity by dissecting apart all soft tissue connections stabilizing the joint. This articulation is preferred when it allows for a greater bone length or protection of the tendinous insertion. What are the controversies regarding this articulation? The question is whether the articular cartilage should be preserved or removed. Leaving the cartilage in place has been speculated to promote infection. However, by preserving the cartilage, it added an advantage in terms of maintaining a closed cavity and preventing adherence of skin directly to the bone. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you have learned something from this video. See you next time. Thank you and bye.